It is so good to see you. You look great in your orange and white. This is the special visitor I was telling you about. So his name is John Fulkerson. So we're going to greet him like you greeted me, okay? So when he tells you good morning, boys and girls, you're gonna say good morning, Mr. John. All right, let's give him a hand. Welcome, Mr. Fulkerson. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. <laughs> That's so good. All right. That was great. That was so good. All right, let me get turned on. All right. All right, if, if you'll have a seat, we are going to drill Mr. Fulkerson with questions today, all about his life, all about his basketball career, and we are going to see how he can motivate us at Fairview to make even better choices and to have good character. That's what we're going to talk about. So I need you to be super good listeners, okay? And we're just gonna start off on, uh, off the bat. And John, can you tell us a little bit about you and your life and your family? Just kind of give us an overview of John. So like your principal said, my name is John Fulkerson. I'm from Kingsport, Tennessee, which I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of. Maybe the teachers have heard of it, yes. Um, it's about an hour and a half from here, and I was born and raised there. I have two younger sisters and one older brother, and my older brother is married, and he just had his first little baby, so I'm an uncle now, a very, very cute child. Um, <laughs> I went to Dobbins Bennett High School, and now I'm going into my sixth year at the University of Tennessee. Wow, all right, and he told me something very interesting. Before you got in here, his mom is a teacher. His dad is a principal, or has been a principal, and your brother is, a is a, also a teacher. So he has a lot of teachers and a principal in his family, so he hears about school stuff, I'm sure, as he was growing up, a lot. So I have a question to start out with. Was anyone ever mean to you in, in like elementary, middle, high school, college? And if so, how did you handle that? Um, I, I guess I would say, um, not necessarily that they were mean, but just the words that they said to me just didn't come across as the nicest words that they could have said. And when, when they said that to me, uh, the way I was raised, the, the way that my parents taught me to respond was honestly the golden rule. Do you guys know what the golden rule is? No. 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 Yes. yes. <laughs> what, what's the golden rule? Right, right. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. And so that's the approach that I took that would when you guys want me saying something mean to you guys? No. no. And so that, that, that's the way that I thought of that. I'm going to treat others how I would want to be treated. And so when people say nice things to me, I really enjoy it. And then when people say mean things to me, that's when I think to myself, I'm not going to say anything mean back because I wouldn't want people saying mean things to me. All right. So we all know how tall he is. In fact, let's, okay. So you know Miss Couples is pretty tall. All right, John. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, right? So because I'm sure you didn't just go from a baby to being that tall, so as you were growing up, I'm sure you were taller than a lot of kids in your class. I was. Um, I was a little bit taller uh, than the average person when I was Gerald's age. But really when I was in middle school and then really high school, during those years of my life was when I really grew. Um, and now you guys see how tall I am now. So, so don't give up. Uh, you never know. Any one of you guys can be as tall as me. So keep eating your vegetables and keep <laughs> drinking milk. <laughs> okay, so here's another question. And we're going to get to the student questions in just a little bit, okay? All right, so what's some advice, John, that you could give to our students about making good choices and about having good character? So this is what I tell everybody. And people always ask me, especially now at my age, I'm 24 years old, I'm a lot older than you guys, and 
I have a lot of, um, I guess, options where I can, make, I can make bad decisions easily. But, you know, I always try to make good decisions. And when I go to think of, think of making good decisions, I think if my mom was sitting right beside me, if you're all's mom, um, dad, grandparents, aunt, uncle, whoever it may be, if they were sitting right beside you, would they want you making that decision? No. So, so, so you want to think, you know, if they were here, I would still make that decision. I would still make the same decision that I just made if they were sitting right here watching me. And so that's what I think about, even still this day, that if my mom was sitting right beside me, would I make this decision? Would I be doing this or doing that? And so when it comes to making good decisions, that's just kind of what I think of. And we've talked about that a lot, don't we, boys and girls, about making good choices and about watching the words that you say, because once you say something, who's responsible for it? You are, that's right. And words can be super hurtful. So you've got to think before you speak. All right, so here's a question. I think this question comes from Miss Braden. All right, Miss Braden said, why did you cut your folky flow? <laughs> so if, for those of you that don't know, Mr. Mr. John, we're going to call him Mr. John. He, he had like longer hair and he would wear like kind of something to hold his hair back when he was playing. So why did you cut your folky flow? So like she said, I used to have really long hair. Like uh, it was like down to my shoulders. It was really long. And um, people nicknamed me Folky and it was flowy. So I kind of got the nickname Folky <laughs> Flow. And... I cut my hair because it kept getting in my eyes. And I, I think everybody out there that has long hair, especially every girl, yes. you're always trying to get your hair out. Or you have it in, in a ponytail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? <laughs> you're always trying to keep it out of your eyes. And so playing basketball with it always flopping around and getting your eyes made it very difficult to play. And so that's when I had to make the decision to cut it. And um, it... It was the process growing it out too. If you've ever grown your hair out, you know it takes a really long time. And so um, it was just time to cut it because it was getting such in my face while I was trying to play basketball. Okay, did your mom like the longer hair or, does, or did your mom like it? Does she like it better or shorter? My mom definitely likes the shorter hair. <laughs> I had a feeling you were gonna say that. All right, so Ms. Blakeney wants to know, what do you feel is your greatest accomplishment uh, accomplishment on or off the court up to this point in your life? I would say on the court would be, I was named to the all SEC team um, two years ago, which they, they just pick a few players in our conference. And um, I was named to one of the best players on the conference two years ago. So that was a, a very good accomplishment for me. Um, on the court and then off the court, I would say that I graduated two years ago with um, my degree in sports management and now this year I'll graduate with my master's in communications and so I think that's a good accomplishment for me that I've graduated college and now I'm pursuing another degree um, in college as well. So what would you tell students in elementary Something, is there something that you could tell them to help them as they advance in their academic career? Maybe they, they are not going to go to college, and that is okay, but they have middle school and high school coming up. So what are some things that they can do now in elementary to help get them ready for that? I would say if I could really go back and talk to my younger self, if I could go back and talk to myself when I was your all's age, I would tell myself to read more. And mm -hmm. just because now... Like I said, I'm, I'm 24 years old. I'm a lot older than you guys. And just a few years ago was when I realized how important reading was and how much it expands your vocabulary, how much smarter it gets you. And so if I could tell you guys anything, I would say um, read as much as you can. Whatever it may be, uh, whatever you're interested in, I would say read as much as you can because you never know what kind of things you're going to learn and, and where it's going to take you. That is great advice. I saw some reading teachers that were clapping. <laughs> you have, sometimes you have reading homework to do, right? Yeah. And sometimes mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, 
they're not able to read with you every night. But usually, don't you know the books that you take home? It's just to kind of give you more practice. So do you think you should still do your reading practice at home even if no one is there to say, do your reading? Should you still do it? Yes. yes. I mean, Mr. John is telling us right now that's one of the most important things that you can do. So yes, we definitely agree with that. All right, so here's another question. This is from Miss Goins. Why did you pick the University of Tennessee and what has been one of your favorite experiences at UT? So I picked the University of Tennessee because, first of all, I was just like you guys. I grew up um, in the state of Tennessee, uh, following Tennessee sports, uh, following their uh, football team, basketball team, and maybe like some of you guys, it was, it was a dream to play basketball at Tennessee. You guys might want to play volleyball, softball, soccer, basketball, football at, at Tennessee. And so I was just like you guys. I wanted to play there as well. But when Tennessee offered me a scholarship, I didn't, I didn't tell them that I wanted to go right away because I wanted to go somewhere where I like my teammates and I like the coaches there and I like the campus, I like the city, everything like that. And so um, there, that was just a few things that went into it. Uh, so just like you guys, like I wanted to like my classmates, I wanted to like my teachers. And so um, that, that's just a little bit of what went into me picking the University of Tennessee. And I can say, uh, I definitely made the best, the best decision, and the University of Tennessee is the best uh, university out there. All right, so let's talk about teachers in your life. Okay, so when I was in kindergarten, boys and girls, I, I don't think you knew this, but I'm going to share something with you. When I was in kindergarten, and I went to Fairview, but you didn't know that, we had nap time. And if you didn't take a nap, you got paddled and I never wanted to sleep, and I got paddled in kindergarten for not taking a nap. So John, have you ever been in trouble with any of your teachers? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, I, wish, I wish we still had nap time. Do you guys have nap time now or no? No. Uh, kindergarten is like second grade used to be. Yes, kindergarten is hard. Man, um, I, I definitely, uh, I have gotten in trouble before with my teachers, and I think the, the biggest thing I got in trouble for was probably not listening. And Ooh. again, that's something that I've learned, and I feel like it, it, was, it was so easy to, to not listen to my teachers and to just talk to my classmates or, or do something on my own, but, but I can tell you guys that it's very, very important that you listen to your teachers because one, they're trying to teach you, but two, they want the best for you and they're gonna lead you in the direct, right direction. And so I would say always, always, always listen to your teachers. Good, thank you. So let's talk a little bit, even though we are elementary school, there are some boys and girls that have phones. That's the world we live in. And I know in middle and high school, you know, you hear things about students sending messages or posting things that really, are not good and maybe parents are not checking their phone maybe they are what would you tell them about what they are sending back and forth to each other using their phones or maybe pictures that they are thinking about putting um, and sending to people what advice would you give them um the way i think about it whatever you guys have on your phones can always be retrieved can always be pulled up by whoever it may be and the way I think of it now, being at my age, is whatever I do on my phone, whatever I send, whatever texts I send, pictures, emails, whatever it may be, social media posts, Twitter, Instagram, uh, whatever it may be, that that one day is going to affect me for my future job. So let's just say I was trying to, I was applying here to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and your principal went looking through my social media looked on the internet, see what they could find about me, and she found some bad stuff. She found bad stuff on my social media, stuff that I've sent to other people that I've put out there, and just that right there, without her even knowing anything about me, uh, cost me a job here. Right. And so, when I think of it, think of your future, how, how it's gonna 
affect you down the road and in your future job. That's the way I think of it. And then really just think twice about life in general. You know, what you say, the actions, the decisions you make, and, and what you decide to uh, send out there with your phone. Yes, that's perfect advice. Thank you. All right, in fact, I'm just curious. If you have a phone, raise your hand. Just curious. And this is elementary. Wow, okay, you can put your hands down. Thank I you. Didn't, I didn't get a phone till I, my birthday in seventh grade, so. <laughs> and how, many, how many of the phones are smartphones? If you have like a smartphone, raise your hand. Wow. Wow, I had a little flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's another question. John, you made a lot of Tennessee fans happy when you announced you were returning for your final year of eligibility. With a season-ending injury you had back in March, tell us about that injury and what you learned from it and how it impacted your decision to come back for your final year of eligibility. So last year we were playing in the SEC tournament in Nashville and we we're playing against the Florida Gators and hopefully there's no Florida Gator fans in here. Oh, you're wearing a Tennessee jersey. It's okay. I'll forgive you. So we were playing against Florida in the SEC tournament and one of their players elbowed me in the head and when they elbowed me in the head um, I lost all my memory of that day and that game and everything. Still to this day, I can't remember anything from that day or us playing or anything. And so um, for them to check out my head, I had to go to the hospital and I had to get a lot of tests done on my head and on my, on my face to make sure everything was okay. And they found out that I broke some bones in my face and I had to get those fixed with surgery. So something cool from this story is me and my trainer got to fly on Tennessee's private jet, oh. which was a really, really nice jet. Um, and it was just me and him on, on a big plane, so it was cool. We flew from Nashville to Knoxville and then back. And um, ultimately, me getting hit in the head, how much I love Tennessee, probably like you guys, how much I love putting on my Tennessee jersey. Um, I knew that not being, able to, not being able to remember my last time that I wanted to come back for another year and really finish on my own terms. And so that, that whole thing ultimately led me to come back for another year. But it also cost me the rest of my season. I wasn't able to play our last three or four games. And so a big thing for me was forgiveness and because I could have easily held a grudge or been mad at that guy, but because I was raised, because of how I was raised and, and just the way that I approached things, I forgave him. And so it, it, was, it was a hard decision um, to forgive him. But um, I always say, you know, if, if there's for things, people that you need to forgive, uh, one of your classmates has, has done something to you and you're mad at them or holding a grudge against them or or a family member or whoever it may be that, you know, forgiveness sometimes isn't, isn't easy. You know, it can be hard, but, you know, just being the bigger person and the better person um, is something that I tried to do. So that's just a little bit about my injury and, and what I learned from it. That is great advice. All right, you said something about flying on the, the jet. Do you all fly to a lot of your basketball games? We do. So uh, how many people have ever flown on an airplane in here? So you guys remember, you go to the airport, if you check your bags, you know, you have to check your bags and you have to go through security. You have to make sure you have nothing in your pockets, no liquids, anything like that. So for us, we don't have to do any of that. Our bus, we're on a big bus, I know, it's not fair. So, so our bus pulls straight onto the big runway where the plane is. And when our bus pulls on there, we go straight off the bus, straight onto the plane and then our plane takes off. We don't have to go through any um, security or there's, no, there's not even any other people on the plane besides my teammates and my coaches. And so uh, we fly, we do that to every single, if it's more than two hours away, we do that to every game. And uh, so, so we fly 
a lot of times during the season. All right, let's talk about food because we love to eat, don't we, at Fairview? All right, so what kind of food do you get on these basketball trips? Do you get to order anything you want? How does that work? Um, usually they, they have the food, uh, they have like a buffet there for us that they have a lot of different options that we can pick from. And it's usually really good food. Uh, it's usually, you know, steak or chicken or some type of fish or um, really good stuff to help fuel our bodies for, for the games and for recovery and, and stuff like that. But we definitely get a lot of food and a lot of good food with basketball. Oh, sounds like they eat very good at UT. All right, this is from Ms. Cantrell's third grade class. What is the most important lesson you have learned playing basketball for the Vols, and what advice would you give for students wanting to play basketball? I would say the biggest thing I've learned is work ethic and working hard. And it's not been easy to get to where I am to play for the Vols and to play for Tennessee. So it's taken me a lot, a lot of work and energy and all my effort to get to this place. Um, so I've definitely learned that, learned work ethic and working hard through basketball to get me to this point. But just because I play basketball and I've worked hard to get there doesn't mean that every single one of you guys is going to play basketball at Tennessee. A few of you guys might, but every single one of you guys is not. And so I would tell you guys to work just as hard that I have, as, have at basketball at whatever you guys like to do. Whatever you like to do, whatever you think is fun, work really, really hard at it and get really, really good at it because you never know something so simple, a task or a hobby or whatever you like to do. If you get really good at it, you never know where it will take you in life. So work really hard at it and just see where it takes you. All right, so what I hear John saying is practice. You're not going to be good at something if you never do it. So I would say dribbling, like you're not going to be a good dribbler with a basketball if you never do it. Um, what, as far as like practice, what would happen if you were late for practice? What, what would Coach Barnes do? Um, it is not good when you are late <laughs> at Tennessee. When you are late for practice or late for workouts or late for anything in general, it is not good. We have a, a punishment workout that you have to do and it is very, Ooh. very, very hard. You guys do not want to be a part of it. <laughs> and so we, you, you know within the Tennessee basketball program not to be late. And if you're late, you know that you've got some punishment coming for you. All right, so as we talk about being late, I know that some of you can't drive yourself to school. I understand that. But you know what you could do to help your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle? You could be easier getting out of bed. I've talked to a lot of your parents and they're, they're like, oh, they won't get out of bed. That's why they're late every day. So when your alarm goes off, what advice would you give them, John? Uh, as, as bad as I would, when I was your all's age, honestly, I, I, I like to be in bed too. Yes. But yes, you like to be in bed. Yes. But it's, it's very important if, if you're always late, then, then that, that's putting in a bad reputation for, for your teachers. Yeah. And like she said, it, it's making it harder on your parents as well. If you guys have siblings, then they're having to get the other siblings up. If, if all you guys are being in bed, it makes it harder on your parents. And if you guys really love your parents or, or your grandparents, aunt, uncle, whoever it may be, then you should get up every single morning on the first alarm when they first try to wake you up just to make it easier on them. Um, because it, like I said, it'll make it easier on them and just to get your day going because you know what? Tonight, you can go right back to that bed where it's That's nice right. and comfy. And it might help if when you are supposed to go to bed that you actually try to go to sleep instead of making yourself stay awake and maybe hide and play video games or something. So go to bed at a reasonable time and it will make getting up much easier. All right, so here is a question from Lola Ellis. Lola said, how tall is your family? So my family, so my dad is 6'6", six, six, so he's a little bit shorter than me. 
my mom is my mom's pretty short. She's probably five five. Uh, my brother is six six as well. So the men in our family, my dad, my brother, and myself are all pretty tall. And then I have two younger sisters, and, and they're pretty tall as well. They're probably 5'10 and 5'11, so uh, my sisters are tall too. Do you ever have trouble fitting in a doorway? Yes. <laughs> I, I've learned now that I just have to duck every time I go through a doorway that could be uh, detrimental to my head. <laughs> All right, a lot of the questions from the students a lot, of, a lot of the ones are asking the same questions, um, but a lot is how long have you played basketball? When did you start? Two years. <laughs> I was probably two years old when I started playing basketball. I was, I was like your all's age. I was, I was very, very young when I started playing basketball. And, I, and I've, I've liked playing basketball ever since I was really, really young. Does anybody in here like playing basketball? Yep. That was just like me. I really like playing basketball. And then, now that I'm older now, I've enjoyed playing it my whole life, and it's been really fun. I've worked really hard at it. And like I said, you, you, guys, should, you guys should too, or, or whatever you like to do. Just keep practicing at it, keep working hard at it. All right, so here's a question from a student. I think it says Isaiah. And it says, what did you do that was very nice? So as you think about your career, and you've already said that you have forgiven the one that hurt you. And he apologized to mm -hmm. you, didn't he? Yes. So what are some other things that you've done that were nice? The big ones. Um, let's see. Things I've done that are nice. I would like to say, let's say, like one time, um, I really love my mom. Um, my mom is one of my best friends. I like surprising her. I like doing things for her. And so... Like to go home, like I said, it's an hour and a half away. And so sometimes I try to go home just to surprise my mom. And my mom's a school teacher too. She has a class just, just like you guys, like your teacher. And so I always try to take her, like come home and surprise her and take her coffee or take her, she doesn't uh -huh. like flowers, but I still take her flowers anyway, just because I want to show how much I love her. Um, I think other nice things that I've done is just being nice to other people, mm. treating others the way I want to be treated. Um, always picking, picking my teammates up, picking my friends up, instead of um, trying to put them down and using mean words towards them. Yes. So uh, just trying to be a positive impact everywhere I go. Um, all right, that's good. And we only have time for one or two more questions. And I know, students, a lot of you wrote questions. I looked through them, and a lot are the same. Uh, but we have time for two more. All right, so from Chelsea. Do you ever not want to go to practice or not want to do a game because of something maybe that happened before? Um, yes, yes. Uh, you know, maybe if, if you're not playing well, if things aren't going well, or... Your, your legs are really tired, or your bodies are tired. If you just want to go to bed, like some of you guys, you just want to sleep, uh, that definitely happens that, you know, uh, maybe not games, because games are really fun, but practice that, you know, you would, you would much rather have some extra sleep or just some rest or some hangout time instead of doing something that's really exhausting and really tiring. So, but that's what makes it, all worth your time and worth your efforts that you have to work hard every single day to try to get better. Did you play any other sports besides basketball or was that your focus? Um, I wish I played other sports. The only sport I played, I played three years of football in middle school. Um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I played football. I never played soccer or t-ball or baseball or anything like that. But so. And then once I got to high school, it was only basketball from there. So just football and basketball. All right. All right, so b before he leaves, we're going to do a few things. First of all, let's give him a big hand for being here today. I know there's a lot more that you want to know about Mr. Fulkerson. 
So you can follow him in the UT basketball season this upcoming year. When is your first game? Our first game, we actually have an exhibition game this Saturday. Um, it's at 3 o'clock. Um, and then our first game is a couple days after that. And a lot of his games are on TV. So if you can't go to the game in person, you can watch him on TV and you can be like, I know him. He came to our school. All right, we have a few gifts for you. And uh, staff, while the students are sitting there, we're going to actually have staff come up and we are going to get our picture with Mr. Fulkerson. All right, let's bring you our gifts first. All right, so what are we presenting him with? Um, so we have some cupcakes that one of oh, our uh, wow. teachers, she's absolutely awesome at making cupcakes. They're wonderful. You will love them. Um, but it's number 10 for your I number. See that. So cupcakes wow. are in a 10 because that's his number. We didn't ask him that, did we? Okay. Oh, just in case you want to touch it off. Okay. <laughs> and this is a way for us to say thank you. We got you. So a little thank you note and some gifts and you are really tall um, <laughs> just so you can go out and dinner and a movie something fun to do so thank we appreciate you. your time and yes we thank do. you yes, we do. I appreciate now we didn't that. ask him but do you have a girlfriend <laughs> mr fulkerson i do have a girlfriend yes he does yes so he can use the gift cards <laughs> to take her out he may even share the cupcakes also all right so boys and girls while you stay seated we are going to have the staff come forward and we're going to do a picture.